Hello and welcome as we gather together across the district to share in this time of worship. Uh, today I'm delighted uh, that Moses John and Ian Greenfield will be sharing with us in conversation as part of our time of worship. Moses and Ian were ordained and received into full connection at the Methodist Conference this summer. It was a great privilege to be able to be there and many of you I know will have uh, supported them and prayed for them, uh, particularly perhaps in the Nid Valley Circuit and the Bridlington Circuit where they both serve. Um, so today we uh, look forward to all that they share with us as they reflect on scripture and as they lead us. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Let us worship God as we bring him the praise, the adoration of our hearts and lives. adoration and confession. The whole world sings of your glory for you are God, the creating, the sustaining, the loving. Your glory stretches across the universe for you inhabit all time and space. You are the life of this world. You are integral to its nature, involved with all people. You are our life, engaged in all our places and with all our activities. So we come to adore and praise you. Adoration because your love came first. Before we were born, you loved us. Before we knew you, you loved us. 
when we forget you, you love us. And when we are in despair, you throw your arms around us and give us hope. Praise, because you are the one who makes sense of our lives. Without you, all is confused and we are lost. You are our true guide, showing us how we can live in harmony with each other and with your world. You have given us Jesus, the one who reveals your nature and walks in your way. So we come to adore and to praise. But we know that there are times when we lose our hold on you. Times of despair and discouragement. Times when life is hard, when our plans fall apart, when loved ones die and we feel abandoned, when we know that we have failed and think you will reject us. Forgive us when we doubt the full glory of your love, when we doubt the scale of your mercy, when we give up rejecting your willingness to give us a new hope. In your love there is renewal, for you are the one who forgives. You are the one who gives new life. You are the one who never abandons us. So we come to adore and to praise. Amen. Matthew chapter 4. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. 
And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boats with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. John chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Thank you, Ian. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Reverend Moses. Uh, I am uh, from uh, Nid Valley Methodist Circuit. Uh, and we got Ian, who just read a Bible passage for us, uh, is from uh, Bridlington Circuit. Many of you know that me and Ian been training together recently, and we got recently uh, ordained together too. Uh, it was a wonderful moment, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and we also uh, recently uh, got back from, uh, from a holiday after, straight after our ordination. So I'm going to ask him a couple of questions, actually, uh, just to just see where we are at. And it's more, hopefully, it'll be a more of a conversation uh, and, uh, and reflecting on the passage that we read as well. First of all, if you don't mind, Ian, can I ask you, where did you go on your holiday? Well, uh, we went back to East Anglia, to North Norfolk coast, to Cromer. Uh, Anne and I uh, and my wife and I lived in Norwich before we uh, moved up here to East Yorkshire and Cromer was always our go-to seaside place. It was our happy place, our place away from, from work and uh, from the busyness of the city. Uh, and also my family still live in Norfolk, about 10 miles south of Norwich, so we had lots of plans to meet up, uh, see the grandchildren, uh, which we hadn't seen for over a year. Uh, we had a holiday cottage about 10 minutes walk from the sea and we took our dogs um, walking i think and, and meeting up with family was really really all that we had planned but it was odd in some ways it was so familiar and yet and yet it seemed strange i mean it was odd going back to somewhere that we knew so well and yet we didn't feel like we belonged there anymore I joked with Anne one morning while we were sitting having coffee. I said, uh, wouldn't it be nice if, nice if we live by the sea? <laughs> well, we do live by the sea. Um, but going back to somewhere that we knew so well actually felt quite awkward. Seeing the family was, was wonderful, obviously. They travelled up uh, for a couple of days to the coast. But it was quite difficult too because from the first moment that we met and, and went down onto the beach with our grandchildren and we were building sandcastles and paddling, somehow it was already tinted with the sadness that in a few days we'd be saying goodbye to them again. Mm. We were lucky enough to be able to visit them on our way back up to Yorkshire too, uh, to celebrate our first granddaughter's fourth birthday. But all too soon we had to say goodbye and drive home. Mm. When I was stationed in Bridlington two years ago, it was an agonising tear away from family, from friends, and from all that familiarity of Norwich and Norfolk. And coming away after our holiday experience, it was like that tear all over again. It yeah. was really quite tough. I could imagine. Yeah, but what about you, Moses? Where, where did you go after conference and ordination services? <laughs> um... I was similar to you, actually, to be honest, uh, in a way that because I went, because it was a quick decision, we went to India uh, for two wow. weeks, uh, yeah, to visit our family, actually, uh, because I haven't seen my family for uh, almost three years, actually. So, so my family, like my father, my mom, and my two sisters, they, they live there, a, a, a place called South India uh, in Tamil Nadu state, and they live in, on the edge of Chennai city. 
I mean, it, it was a miracle actually uh, to to come back home safely without getting stuck in a quarantine or, or it, it's a it's a miracle, and we are really grateful that we were able to go and come back without any serious problem. And although it's a, the journey took a long journey, I mean, it took us by the time we left our house to get there, it took us thirty five hours to get there, wow. uh, and, and, uh, to get to India and. Uh, only 28 hours to get back to England. So it's not bad. <laughs> it was a long journey, but, but it was worth it. It was worth it, you know, it was worth it uh, uh, because it was wonderful to see our family. But, but, you know, as you said, things have changed because I, I haven't seen my family for three years. Uh, and every time I go, everything changes, our streets and the houses and the, the way everything else changed. And I am changed too. Uh, because I'm, I'm 40 years old. I recently celebrated my birthday. <laughs> uh, uh, but I came here to England when I was 20 to study. So in a sense, I lived uh, half of my life, adult life in England mm -hmm. and half of my life in India. So it's like a 50-50. So when I go back to India, they no longer see me as an Indian person because I don't even speak properly my own language and I don't even speak <laughs> English properly. So I don't speak both of them. So I'm like somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so I don't say to anywhere. However, when I go to India, this one thing, because my father is a minister and we got churches there as well, and they expect me to preach. So ironically, I end up preaching more than what I would preach here when I go on a holiday for two weeks. So this time I only preached like four times. But the significant feedback that I had after I preached is this. They told me I speak too slow and quiet. I mean, I, I took it as a compliment, to be honest, because people have told me, my worship development group told me, I need to speak slow, I need to speak quiet. <laughs> but actually, they found it too quiet and too slow. Anyway, so it's a wonderful journey, and it's, it's nice to see things changes, and I, even I am changed, even when I go back to my familiar place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway... Uh, as I said, what happened? I know we all both had a good time to see our families in, a, in, a, in our familiar place. So now coming back to Burlington, uh, Burlington uh, how, what happened? How do you feel about it now? Are you happy to be here? Oh, yeah, I can really identify with the sort of almost an identity crisis that you were talking about there, about, you know, who we are. Because to begin with, coming back here to Brid, it, it was almost like I had to remind myself that this was the real life, the, the new life, the new me, almost, e even after two years on probation here and after being ordained and starting on that first Monday, um, you know, I had to remind myself that I had left my nets and followed Jesus here, here to Bridlington uh, and, and all of the unfamiliarity of that. But, but it was almost like now there were more nets to leave already. Mm. The slow emerging out of the hibernation of COVID, I mean, the fresh opportunities that we might have at our town church. We've got a new superstore being built right next door to the church and the opportunities that that might provide. And I suppose that, I don't know, this is a process I ought to be used to. I've been involved in the Methodist church most of my life. Um, and there's always the next thing coming along. And there's always the last thing that you have to leave behind. Mm. But we're actually not very good at that, are we? <laughs> we're not very good at leaving <laughs> no. behind something. I mean, especially when we try something new and we really want it to succeed or, or if we feel that we're being led somewhere, somewhere that we don't want to go. Yeah. Um, we want to go back to our nets, to those old familiar nets. Yeah, um, yeah, And there have been times, you know, over the last few years when I've really struggled, uh, you know, against my own natural inclinations or found new things difficult. And I thought gardening is what I know best. I did it for 35 years. Gardening is what I'm best at. Gardening is what I'm really passionate about. But I also know that Jesus is not going to let me down because he has asked me to leave those nets behind and to follow him. Mm. And he'll keep asking me to leave my nets and follow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, th th thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. 
what happened so to you when you got back from India? Did you had that? What happened when you got back from India? Did you find that the world out you? <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you find? How did you find things? I, I mean, first of all, I, I find uh, it was sad to leave the family behind. Actually, because that was a bit uh, because I got elderly parents, and it was sad to leave them behind. And when I get back mm. to England, it's almost a sense of I never left. In that sense of that we're coming back there. <laughs> However. I have to. I had to catch up with the emails. Goodness me! I had like a a five thousand emails. I mean, this is all because my email has been hacked. So, so it's a more of like a time to catch up with the impossible things. Oh, it, 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 anyway, it took me a week to catch up with things, and it was good to see my churches were doing well and they survived, and it was nice to see. But it's almost like a. It didn't take long to be a, a, with your what God has called you to do. You know, it, it just, you come back to that place, you know you meant to do those things. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't take long to get back to normal, what you could call it in a sense of, but you're calling. Uh, so we just both enjoyed that. And uh, yes, it's been a good. So Ian, you know, we both been to visit our familiar place, don't we? I mean, I mean mm-hmm. and then we had to leave behind and uh, back to our calling, uh, our work, in a yeah. sense, even sometimes it's difficult, our things, but we, back to the things that what we are really called to, hence mm. that we are where we are now. Yeah. yeah. But, but can you tell me, can you tell me that, uh, how, because how does this all fit with the, the, the experience that we just shared, uh, being on a holiday, family place and coming back, uh, and uh, now we read the scripture, two different scriptures, and it's very interesting scriptures because one of them is the beginning of what Jesus was calling his disciples. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the John 21 is uh, towards the end of the ministry of Jesus' ministry uh, it, 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 on this earth, he, after resurrection. And both of them, interestingly, the, the disciples were fishing. Mm-hmm. So can you, can you unpack that to me for us? And how does that fit with the experience that we got? And maybe some of us, thinking the similar experience in that life how does that scripture interpret for us yeah yeah absolutely I I mean those few verses that we heard Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee calling those first disciples I think what struck me immediately they left their nets and followed Mm. you know their, their jobs their livelihood families homes everything all the things that were familiar to them all the things that were familiar to to us too uh, and I know I had that same sense of, of leaving everything that was familiar to me probably many times, even since responding to the call to ordain ministry. Mm. I, I left my, my job in gardening, I left Norwich, left college to go to Birmingham. And it just kept echoing with me. Immediately they left their nets and, and so did I. And, and I believe so do we all. So do we all when we move on from something that's, that's familiar to us to something that's new. Because Jesus calls us to follow him. And that often means leaving the familiar behind. I often wonder what the, what the disciples thought they were going to do on, on their day one of discipleship, you know, following Jesus instead of fishing. Yeah. I can remember sitting at my desk on day one in ministry and at day one after, after being ordained uh, and thinking, I've got no idea what to do. <laughs> and, so, and sometimes we just have to have the courage to, to leave the familiar and follow and follow. But, but we like the familiar, don't we? We so like the familiar. We like to get back to what we know. We think <laughs> everything will be all right if we can go back to what's familiar. Yeah. And I, I know that we chose that curious combination of passages um, because that's exactly what the disciples did. They went back to their nets. Mm. And at the end of that, that John's gospel part, uh, you know, Simon says, I'm going fishing. You can just imagine it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a dead flat moment. I'm going fishing. What about you guys? Yeah, all right, we'll all go as well. Yeah. And, and I suppose if I'm really honest, if I'm really tired and things are getting on top of, of me, I want to say to Anne, I'm just going out to do the garden. She goes, you, know, you look exhausted, you know, just go and rest. <laughs> But professional gardening is what I did for 25 years. I'm going back to the familiar. <laughs> What's comfortable, you know, to what I know, to, to that, that place where, where I feel I can relax. Mm. 
thank you. And I suppose, I suppose in many ways, going back to Norfolk, um, you know, it's like going back to fishing for the disciples. Mm. They caught nothing. Mm. And I thought that was a really poignant part of that. They caught, suddenly the familiar was unfamiliar to them. They cast their nets, they've done it for years. Suddenly mm. it's unfamiliar until they reconnected with Jesus. Yeah. But it, it was never going to be the same. Fishing on, on Lake Galilee was never going to be their main call on their lives any more than it will be for you or me. Mm. Um, since, since we left our nets and followed Jesus. And I suppose as we struggle to find our way, all of us in this strange new post-pandemic, mm. anxious, fearful world, mm. finding that we had to leave our familiar nets, mm. I suppose I wanted to say, where do we draw the courage to follow with confidence Jesus as he calls us to respond to, to the new challenges that we're going to be faced with in our lives. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And that's really, thank you so much uh, for your, for your wonderful insight on this scripture uh, and, and about our situation we are in right now. Mm. Uh, I think one of the things I picked up from your insight is that we have to have the courage to leave behind our familiar, familiarity mm. and to follow. And mm -hmm. I, I like that about because for, I think one of the quotes somebody said to me that is that being courageous is not the same as not feeling scared. Is yes. I think I think is being courageous is about what you do when you do feel scared. Yes, you know yeah. I think that that's something that even in despite of that fear, what you do. And because fear is not about that, it's a denial, like you now stepping out, it's, kind of, it's not a denial, despite that scary feeling of leaving our familiarity, but, mm. but, but God gives us grace to deal with. Yes. And, and it helps us to cast our nets. Uh, yeah. or in other words, you could say cast our fears and yeah. follow, you know, yeah. because that's a one John, uh, uh, one John chapter 4, verse 18, it says like this, Perfect love cast out fear. In, in one sense that we could say that the perfect love cast out our nets in that yes, sense of our yes. things, like, oh, in, like in that, that sense, yeah. leaving the nets behind. Because it's not just coincidence that towards the end of the passage that you read in John 21, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Three yeah. times. You know, yeah. it's, it, it, this is a moment of restoration. You know, mm. kind of telling them it's okay, it's all right to be scared, but here I am and come to mm. restore you and guide you. So, so understanding that perfect love that God has for us, which includes the forgiveness and the restoration, mm -hmm. and we can transfer our that love into our life and also in others' lives, in our actions, that are how we can transfer that perfect love. Because there's always a temptation to return to old ways when things oh, yeah. get uh, difficult or, or face uh, disappointments, uh, which mm -hmm. blocks us from truly walking in the newness of life or even the new reality that God has given us for us. But yet, the Lord, our Lord, will meet us in our failings, in our challenge, uh, and, and in our disappointments, and the challenges to get back to our core calling that what we meant to be yeah thank yeah. you thank you so much for that yeah. and uh, yeah would you like us just to finish us in prayer yes yes thank you moses thank you so much yeah let let's just hold all that as we come to god just for a moment or two in prayer loving god you call each of us to follow you again and again and again Strengthen us and give us the courage to respond again and again and again. Fill us with your spirit and guide us in the ways that you would have us go. Because in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Oh, 
thanksgiving and intercession. Jesus, we come with our prayers of thanksgiving, grateful for our lives, for everything that we receive, but above all, for the promise that is embedded into our faith, the promise that God's grace is available to all. This is the cause of gratitude, that through your life, your suffering and your death, we see the height and depth of the love that lies at the heart of life. Love that is not dependent upon us, and that is not given because we deserve it, but love poured out whoever we are, whatever we have done with our lives. Jesus, you pray for those who crucified you, for the one who betrayed you, those who judged you, the ones who were afraid to speak out, the soldiers who did their duty, the ones who hammered in the nails. We are comfortable praying for dip victims, for those who suffer, but you show that we should also pray for the violent and the unjust, for the ones who abuse, the bullies and those who exploit weakness those ones who accept injustice, all who are unknowing and careless of the suffering that they cause. And so we bring our hopes and prayers for this suffering world. For all who worry about tomorrow, how they will feed themselves and their children, and for those who have more than enough, unwilling to share their good fortune. For all who have lost jobs or businesses and do not know what lies ahead, and for those who have benefited from the current economic situation. For all living with violence or war, unsure if new life is possible, and for those who hit out to relieve their own tensions, or are willing to cause pain and suffering, even if, if it creates some benefit for themselves. For all worried about their health, the prospect of operations or delays in getting treatment, and for all doctors, nurses and other healthcare workers under strain at this time. For our 
ourselves, the varied circumstances of our lives, and for our personal worries about ourselves and our loved ones. Jesus, you hear our prayers and are close to each one of us. We are grateful. Amen. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glory without fault and unspeakable joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, power and authority, through Jesus Christ our Lord, before time was, now and in all ages to come. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, remain with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.